Hello. Welcome to the VisualWorks product introduction. My name is Arden Thomas. I'm the Syncom Small Talk product manager. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, please send them to athomas at syncom.com. This introduction is targeted to anyone new to VisualWorks. First of all, welcome. Small talk is an incredible language, and VisualWorks is the most successful commercial small talk product available. Today, we're going to walk through the product and highlight things that you need to get started, some things that you use all the time, and some things that you'll want to know for future needs. The product we're looking at here is the personal use license version, which you may well be using. And we started it up. And what we're looking at here is the launcher and a workspace. This workspace for the PUL product has lots of links for getting started. How to build simple VisualWorks applications, where to find tutorials, just access to lots of great information right here. The other thing that you want to do whenever you start up a brand new virgin small talk image is give it a name by saving image as, let me call it here, dev test. So we've saved this. Now everything logged goes against dev test and not the clean virgin image that we want to keep just that way. So we'll always start, if we're starting brand new, with the VisualWorksNC.im image, and then we'll immediately save it as a name. We are going to walk through the launcher primarily, left to right, and we'll show you the things that you use most of the time. We're not going to show you everything. There's a lot of, of details in here, but we'll, we'll show you the 20% the of the things that you use 80% of the time. So we showed you how to save the image as a different name. When you're working and you want to save, save your image, you can just click Save Image or right here, this just does the save image right here. To exit, you can choose exit and you can save it or, or not save it. If you've done something that, that is a problematic and you don't want to save, you can say no. Otherwise, generally you'll say yes. I'm going to cancel this here because I'm not putting. So that's file. Set VisualWorks Home. This is your home directory where you have the product installed. It uses this to find all the things in the subdirectories. So if you were looking at code that, that looks unusual, in other words, all your variables have all these odd, odd names, uh, it, it may be decompiled code, and you may need to come here and set your VisualWorks home so it knows where to find the source code to that to display it properly. Okay, next up, let's talk about parcels. There are lots of optional frameworks that you can load into the system, and most of those are stored in parcels. So if I wanted to load a parcel, there's a couple ways to do that. I can go right here, system load parcels named, and you can simply start typing in the name we want something to do with store, say store for a particular database. This one for PostgreSQL comes already installed in the PUL version, but not in the full version, so bear that in mind if you need it. Another way is right here with the Parcel Manager. Let me click on that. I'll open it up. It will show you popular ones and all kinds of things categorized see another one that's automatically loaded in the PUL is the UI Painter, which lets you create user interfaces, GUI interfaces for the product. And again, this is not installed by default in the full product, but is in this one. So if you wanted to install um, one of these parcels, let's see, RB Tab Toolsets, for example, you can simply right click on it and load it. So let me do that with this one. Let me show you what that does. If I open up, this is a, probably the most frequently used tool, which is called the browser. And in view here, I can create a new view, and this gives me browser tabs right here. The default product can create these views, but it does not show you tabs. So this is a really popular 
I'm closing this, multiple views exist, exit anyway, yes, in this case I want to. So I usually load this into my tools as a, as a, a, a useful developer tool. So that is two ways to load parcels for your environment. What's next? Collect garbage. Objects can be garbage collected when they are no longer referred to. Collect garbage is collecting garbage is basically done automatically. You don't need to worry about it. If you wanted to force or run a garbage collection, you can click on collect garbage. Collect all garbage also goes into something called perm space, which generally is ignored for the purposes of garbage collection. They're essentially permanent objects that are not do not routinely need to be collected. So if you have worked in your environment a long time and you've built a lot of classes, a lot of code, and you want to move that work into perm space, you can do a file perm save image as, and you can use the same name, that's fine, but it will move those objects into perm space. Then if you delete classes, the only way they'll actually disappear is if you run a collect all garbage. The next thing is settings, which you can get to right here, but usually you'll click right here. Now there are lots and lots of settings, so I'm just gonna go through a few that are really useful. First, for the look and feel, we use something called skins, and I'm using a native skin. So on Windows and Mac OS, it actually uses the host operating system to render your widgets, so they are they 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 look perfect on those platforms. There's other choices. Say you're running on Linux and you want it to look like Windows, you can use an emulated Windows platform. Another that I find really useful. Say I have two images running, or even say three, and I want to distinguish quickly which one is which. If I have two images running, I'll probably leave one native. This is uh, native Windows I'm running on right here. And the other one I'd set to default red. Let me apply that, and you'll see. Now, any window I look at, I can immediately tell if it's from one image or the other. So I can immediately distinguish which windows belong to what. Let me go back to native, apply. So, and, and if I had a third, I would make one green. So that is a really useful capability of the product. The other thing that I use most frequently, let's see if, let me show you back to the browser here. Let's say I wanted this font right here to be different. I can come to Tools, Text Size, let me make it large, apply, and notice the change there. I'll go back to Medium. You could also choose, let me go to Small, or the default Medium. A lot of times, though, I want to change what I'm looking at right down here, which is where you'll be writing your code. To go there, I go to Editor, the Editor Specs, and these are the fonts in order that it looks for on your system. And by the way, Verdana and Tahoma are excellent coding fonts. But if I wanted something different, let's say, for example, there's a, a font called Roboto that I, I use a lot these days. I can type that in there, put a comma, and apply. And notice it immediately changes right here. The next thing you can do once you've changed that font is also change the, de the, the sizing offset from the default. So if I want to make this larger, I can make it, for example, plus three, and it makes it significantly larger, or I can go the other way if, if I need to for, for whatever reason. I'll leave it at default right here and apply that. So those are the most frequently used settings that I use. There are lots of options that you can, you can look at and make personal decisions for your own environment once you're more familiar with it. But generally, I don't make a whole lot of changes in here, but I will change the font. I, I, I like some different fonts, and I will definitely use different colors for multiple images when I'm working with multiple images. Okay, next up is Browse. 
So I can go to specifically to a class. I can type in the name right here, or I can do that right here in the browser. I can do other things, though, too. I can say, show me all references to a particular class. Show me all the implementers of a, of a particular selector name. That's the method name. Anyone who sends to a particular selector uh, and other matches. But generally, I'll work right in the, the system browser, which you will generally launch right from here, and search. And once you find something, let's search for the collection class, for example. And I found it right here. Once you find particular here I am in Array Collection. I've selected this method. I can say right here, show me all other implementers of this. Show me all senders of this method. And within this hierarchy, which is often useful, just within this hierarchy, show me all senders and other implementers. So in superclasses and subclasses of this method, I can find them. You'll also see other things here. You could rename it which will, will not only rename it right here, but all references to this method will be renamed as well. You can remove it, move it to another category or package, etc. For more information on how to use the browser, there's a whole common tools tutorial on the browser. Let's move on. Now, so there's a number of things, of things here about probes. A probe, let's say you want to stop whenever you hit this code, you can insert a breakpoint. Notice, oh, look at that, we, we got it right there. And you can have one infinity, which means every time, and you probably don't want that because the infinity, unless you're sure if you have infinity every time it hits here and it can be repeatedly so all of a sudden you could have a thousand windows open up and begin to crash your system so this lets you get in once or or every time depending on the code now if you wanted to see browse probes it shows you everywhere you have probes I could have it lots of places in the system and also if I want to remove all the probes from the system, I can do exactly that. I can remove all the probes that I've put in, and it's asking me if I want to exit this debugger. I'll go ahead and exit that. The probe is gone, and the debugger is closed down. Another thing here is Open Process Monitor, and that'll show you all the processes that you have running in, in case you have a a rogue process, or you just want to see what's running, and then in case you had a, a rogue process, you could do things like terminate it, or change the priority of a process, which you want to be careful in doing things like that. Next item is store. Store is our source code control system, and allows you to have a database on your machine or remote, connect to it, and publish all your code, or load code. Now this, with the PUL version, this is automatically installed, and you can come right here and say, let's connect to the Syncom public repository, come back to the menu, published items, and shows you all the things that you have right here, or rather all the things that are in the public repository. So if you wanted to look up a tool like class cloning, you could have this right here, you can select the, the latest and right-click and load it into your image. Once you're done, you can disconnect from store. If you have, if you have work that you're sharing with a team and, and you're connected to your team repository and you want to see what's new, Recently published items shows you all the items that you have loaded, but there's newer versions in the repository. So this is this is really useful. If you're building something and you, you, you work on new things, it'll show you in a red number here how many changes there are, and you can right-click on it and publish that 
to your repository. So that's a quick, quick introduction to store. The next tools, you can open a workspace, but you can also do that right here, open a workspace. A workspace lets you test out code, try things out. So I can say 10 factorial, and I can execute that, which shows nothing. I can execute it and show the result, or I can execute it and print the result, or I can debug it and walk through the code and see how that how it's written and how that works and, and check things out or, or debug my work. That's the workspace. Other things, file browser you saw, parcel manager you saw, change list. Change list is really useful if I'm working and for some reason I, I, I managed to crash my image, which is pretty rare, or maybe the power goes out and my, my whole machine crashes. So a change list is basically a window into the, the log that's kept. Every change you make on the system is logged in, in, in a file. So if you suddenly, or, or say you, you shut down your image, but you forgot to save it, or you deliberately did because you want to come back and just load the pieces that are that are, are valid and you want to ignore the pieces that are, are problematic. Maybe you wrote some code that manages to crash the system and you want to reload everything but that. So if you came back in, you can recover last changes, which is all the things that since the last time. So I can see things like my, my, my 10 factorial do it. And usually if you have a lot of code here, what you'll do is you can remove old versions then remove the same code as the system. You can forget all the things that are marked, and then you can replay one at a time. You could choose something and replay that one item, or you could say things like replay all from the top or all from this position down. So that's a quick introduction to the change list. The painter lets you and you can get to the, essentially create a new canvas with this icon right here. And you can put things like buttons, check boxes, input fields, and build your user interface. We have separate tutorials on this, but this is where to find the tool. Install the changes, no. There is one other tool down here, Coding Assistant. Coding Assistant lets you add getters and setters to your for your class instance variables. Um, this is also prompted when you create a class, but if you forgot, you can come back here and create those. Window, you can find all the windows. Let's let's open a let's open this. Let's open a, a browser. And if I want to get to those, I can go right right to those those tools right from Window. Finally, help. Help takes a little bit the first time. It's going to load it in and set it up for you. Once you've done that, it opens help, and there's lots of references and information, including introduction to small talk language, the development tools, very useful examples that you can, you can try out as well. But there's more information in the help pull down here. This is really useful right here. VisualWorks documentation is installed along with your system. And clicking on this opens up the index to all the documentation set that's installed on your system. So a, a great way to, to reference it and get to all that information. Uh, you can see about, about this, but the most popular ones, you'll go to Topics, or the documentation. There's also a really good introduction to Smalltalk right here. It tells you all about Smalltalk, how to use it, examples, etc. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Until next time, have a great time with Smalltalk. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, please reach me, Arden Thomas at athomas at syncom.com. Thank you.